Once again, good morning, okay? I don't know why, but the sound today is not that high, not as, as it should be, I believe. Uh, today, uh, I want to talk about something that I'm sure you've heard a lot, okay? Okay? And it's uh, the, 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 the main tool, the main tool or the main essence of our life as a Christian person is what I'm going to talk about today, okay? And I hope, my hope, my prayer is that this sermon, this preaching for God's, is for God's glory always, okay? And that God can use me and touch your hearts the way you should be touched, we should be touched by the power of His Word, amen? amen. Because the main goal is to hear and do what He tells us to do, amen? So today we're going to talk about faith. Faith. Ah, what is faith? Faith. Faith on those moments that you are in despair and you need something to be done. You need something to be done. It, it's not happening. And you need that to be happened, right? You need a special favor from God. You need a special present, a gift. You need something to be done because you're desperate. You need the Lord to act on your behalf. You need the Lord to do something for you. And then in that moment comes faith. But the main goal now is for you to start using the faith God gave you. Amen? Amen. In all senses, in all times. Not only when you are desperate, when you're dying, or you're sick, or you have, no. Faith is the most valuable thing or <coughs> present or gift we have. Amen? Amen? The most valuable after love. Love is number one, always. Faith is second. But faith is always as equal as love itself. Love and faith. The problem is that most of the Christian people nowadays, church members, they lose faith. Oh, I have the faith in God. Until you have something in your life, then you feel despair, you don't feel well, because something happened to you, of course, right? And then say, where's my God? That's the first question you say, where's my God? Why did this happen to me? Right? So one, one day you are full of faith. If something happens the next day, you have no faith. This is the, the way people are, up and down, you know, very, very unsustainable. You know what I mean? Not sustainable. So let's see here, the Bible has a wonderful story about faith. And today we're going to read on the book of Mark. Chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. And let's see what happened here, okay? Verse 21. Mark 5, verse 21. And today we're going to read it. Okay, page 710. Page, in, in fact, it's page 711. Mark 5, 21. Oh, good. 7, 10. Okay. This is a story of a man named Jairus. Or Jairus. I said Jairus, but many people say Jairus. And it's a wonderful story. I've said this story here before. So I'm saying that again. But pay attention, please, to what happened, okay? Uh, verse 
no faith comes for us to overcome obstacles. Faith comes in the moment that we have to obtain victories. Now, it's, it, it, there's a problem, an obstacle that has to be overcome. Amen? Yeah. And that's when faith comes in. Through faith, we can be more than conquerors, more than conquerors, no matter what it is. Amen? Have to be have that faith. We have to use our faith to see the impossible. To see the impossible. It's not happening now. But my faith will in God, in Jesus Christ, will turn this over. Amen? Amen. And that's what I'm gonna say here. So we're gonna start reading verse 21. Page 710, Mark 5. Mark 5, verse 21. A dead girl and a sick woman. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers, named Jairus, or Jairus, came, he, came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him. My little girl, daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd with him. Okay, uh, this is 24. Then go to verse 35. Okay, skip this time now. Go all the way down to verse 35. While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue were, your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Ignoring what they said, Jesus told the synagogue ruler, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except J Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue ruler, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but sleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Telitha nun kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immedi immediately, the girl stood up and walked around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave his strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. Amen? Amen. God bless his word. Amen? It's a beautiful story. And what you see here, uh, I'm going to try to show you several or different levels or types of faith, okay? The first faith, the first type of faith we see here, and they are all, all those types of faith are for us to take them and try to have the same kind of faith, okay? As I said here before, whatever is good, it can and it has to be copied. Amen? Amen. Whatever is good. If you see somebody doing something good, painting, doing some kind of work, sing, whatever. If it is good, let's do it. And mainly in terms of faith. So what is, what is, what is, how is your faith? Do you have a strong faith? Do you really believe God? Or, uh, or do you only believe in God when things are good? When you are blessed, when you have money in your pocket, when you have no disease, when you're healthy, we're nice, and then you believe in God. When nothing happens to you, okay, God's good, I believe in Him. What happens when bad things happen to you? How do you feel? 
how what is a reaction when you feel unjust when somebody bothered you somebody spoke bad about you somebody gossiped bad about you gossip is also bad gossip about you somebody uh, attacked you somebody cursed you how do you feel in those moments that you know there's something wrong you know, that, that is happening with you, with a person, with 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 your uh, reputation. How how do you react uh, you know, like, uh, about that? You know, you have to know that this is a problem for many people. <coughs> many people, many church members, many church members are only good members when things are are are. I read well. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm very active in my church. But don't touch me, okay? If you touch me, you'll see what you have. <laughs> okay? Right? And that's not, that's, not, that's not the kind of faith we should have. Amen? The faith we have here, uh, what Jairus uh, showed. Remember, J J I said J J Jairus. Jairus was a synagogue ruler. Synagogue ruler. He was like the, 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 the lead pastor. The lead pastor in synagogue. Okay? It was Jairus. He was supposed to be very attached to the, to the Pharisees. Okay? And doctors of law. Okay? Because they were practically put there by the priest or by one of the Pharisees. So those cynical rulers, they had to preach and to say what the Pharisees wanted. Amen? That's what happened. <coughs> so the cynical ruler, for sure, I believe that Jairus did not, did not didn't, didn't like Jesus. He didn't want to hear anything about Jesus. No, he persecuted Jesus, for sure. Because that's what they did. But when his daughter got sick and started dying, when he 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 remembered, because he I'm sure he saw Jesus healing people, but he never believed. In spite of what he saw, he never believed. But that day his daughter was dying. He was when he came to Jesus, she was practically dead. And she died while he was there talking to Jesus, okay? So when his daughter got sick and started dying, he remembered. He didn't care anymore about the Pharisees. He didn't care anymore about his position, about how important he was. He was an important man, the synagogue ruler, okay? He didn't care about it anyway. That he knew that if he seek, if he sought, if he looked for Jesus Christ, there would be a problem. He would lose his position as the synagogue ruler. He knew that. But he loved his daughter more than anything else. Amen? He, as a father, as a father, and I'm a father, he did it the right thing. He didn't care about his job, his position. He cared about his daughter's life. Amen? And this is something we should take. We should take as an example that sometimes what you do, what happens to you has a limit. Has a limit. When you are among people who don't believe in God, you are among people who don't believe in Jesus Christ, you are among people who don't care about the Bible, but you are a Bible believer. You are a person who has faith in the Lord. Amen? And so how do you interact with those people? How do you live with those people who have no faith? Who have little faith? How do you manage that? Jairus came to Jesus. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue named Jairus arrived. And when he saw Jesus, he fell down at his feet. <laughs> he fell on his feet. You know, 
for, see, for Jesus, Jesus knew that he was going to lose his position in society. He was going to lose his job. He was going to lose his progress position in the synagogue. You'll be, you'll be persecuted by the Pharisees and Sadducees and not so loved by everybody. He didn't care. He started to die, he came to it, and he fell down on his feet. And what, what that means? That means reverent faith. Reverent faith. What, is, what does re reference mean? Do you do know, do, do know what reference means? Reverence? Reverence means a gesture of respect and honor. That meant Jairus had more respect than most of the disciples. And that is the kind of faith we should have. Remember, our God is God. Don't you ever be disrespectful with your faith for God. How can you be disrespectful? You be disrespectful when you hear comments about the Lord with your co-workers, with your friends or in the streets, and you don't care. You don't care. You don't pay the price. You don't want to be even, even uh, seen as a Christian person. You know what I mean? You don't care. You know, it's not your faith now. There are some moments that you don't care about your faith, but we should care about your faith. Amen? You have a true faith in the Lord. You are bound for heaven if you, you stay on his word. And because of that, you should pay the price. Amen? So then what happened? Second, the first reverent faith. Second faith, supplicating faith. Supplicating faith. What does supplicate mean? Supplicate means to ask humbly and earnestly. You know, you know, people, many people ask us to pray. We pray. But, but, many people ask, but don't pray. Many people don't pray. Or pray too little. Remember, whatever is your need, you have to knock on heaven's door. Knock on heaven's door. And say, Lord, I need this, Lord. I need your favor. I need your help. I need your help. And do as Jairus did. If somebody needs your help, if people, of course, you, you, we all know, I know people who need my help in, in, in faith. I know people who need my prayers. I need things that I have to pray for in order to happen. And I'm sure all of you know people around you who need your prayer. Right? So you have to pray for that. When God touches you, either circumstances, things that have to happen, miracles have to happen, buy a car, go do this, buy a house, travel, school, uh, work, a new job. I'm praying for a new job. Uh, by the way, I passed the second interview, I'm going to do the third interview. I didn't know that, the third interview. So praise God, I passed two interviews. I'm heading for the third one. And it demands faith, right? And I have to come to the Lord supplicating faith. If you don't come like this, folks, how do you expect God to hear if you, if you pray like a robot? Oh, Lord, please help. Oh, Lord, please. No, 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 no. 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 You have to have a living faith. A living faith. Like Jairus did. Living faith. It says here, Mark 5, 23. Look at this. It says here, and pleaded earnestly with him. My little daughter is dying. Earnestly. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. Amen. That is the kind of faith we should have, folks. When you pray, pray with a supplicating faith. Okay? Also, what Jairus happened here? And what happened? Jairus was on the way home. Jesus Christ heard him. 
He just says, okay, I'm going to go and help you, okay? On the way to his house, what happened? On the way to his house, verse 35, okay? While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jerry. Some men came from the house. He was on the way with Jesus Christ to his house to heal his daughter. The synagogue wrote her, your daughter is dead. His friends came to him from his house. Say, man, forget it, forget it. Your daughter is completely dead. Forget it. Don't disturb the prophet. He's a prophet. No, this guy healed people. This guy did the miracles and healing people and expelled demons, but he cannot do anything else. Your daughter is dead. Yo, Jesus Christ cannot do anything else anymore. You know, he doesn't have, he does not have this power to bring back your daughter back to life. Okay? This one is the daughter, forget it. She's dead. There's nothing else your prophet can do. <laughs> That's what they told him. They told him, forget it. She's dead. There's nothing Jesus Christ can do. Forget it. But what happened to Jairus? He had a proven faith. Proven faith. Listen to this. How many times things happen to you? Happen to you that it was supposed to happen this way. It didn't happen even the other way, a bad way. And God allows bad things to happen to you to prove your faith. Say, God, why did this happen to me, Lord? What happened to me? Why? Why what happened to me? Why did this happen to me, Lord? Why me? How many times you cry now? For whatever reason. Problems, diseases, financial problems, whatever. Or even your spouse hurt you, discussion. Fights, whatever. Why did this, why did, did he do this to me? Why did she do that to me? Why what this happened to me? You are really you no know, compressed. You know, put it up against the wall. Because what expected didn't happen. So your faith sometimes it is proven. God allows your faith to be proved because God wants to see how trustworthy your faith is. Amen? Amen? Amen. This is what happens. Oh, you trust me? Okay, fine. You trust me? You trust me only when you have money in your pocket and when you think it happened. I want to see you now. I want to see if you trust me now. Now I want to see because it's easy to trust God when things are fine. But when things don't happen the way it should happen, <laughs> he got desperate. And so God allows things to happen, folks, to prove your faith. And once again, did the Jerry say, okay, my daughter's dead. I, you know, he turned around and said, Jesus Christ, Jesus, I'm sorry, but there's nothing can do. My daughter's dead. Did he say that? No, no. He never gave up on his faith in Jesus Christ. He, in fact, he, he, he heard more. He went straight home. He knew in his faith, in new faith, that Jesus Christ there was the only one who could do something. It is the same thing with us. Sometimes things happen to you that only Jesus Christ can do something. Nobody else. Only him. I've, I've shared this with you guys several times in my life, several times in my life, that I have to beg the Lord to help me. Many times, on the plains, falling, <laughs> on the sea, dying in the sea, with the cancer in Naples when I talked to my wife and God used her to heal me. In the jungle, in the forest, crossing a river full, full of alligators and pirata, pirata, all that stuff, man. So, I know what it is like to bear your Lord when you did it the most. Amen? Amen? For God's glory, I know that. Uh, anyway, another, another 
type of faith is the confident faith. What does confident mean? Confident means full of conviction. Confident means showing assurance and self-reliance. Showing assurance. Confident means trustful. Okay? And that's what Jesus told Jairus. He said, Fear not, only believe. That's what Jesus said. Fear not, only believe. And then when he got to Jairus' house, okay, what happened? He saw a commotion, which, which people crying and wailing loudly. People were desperate, wailing, crying, crying. Say that she's dead, she died, she died, she died, she's dead. And another kid, no, blah, 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 blah. The child is not dead, he said. The child is not dead. He told the people. And then what did they do? They laughed. They laughed. This one said sarcastically. <laughs> Look at this. This prophet here says that she's not dead. The guy is crazy. How don't she hear she there's nothing he can do. She's dead. And people start laughing at Jesus Christ. You know what he did? He separated. He, he got Jairus, the father, and his wife only, and then James, and James' brother, right? And John, only three. And he went up to, to the room. The, all those people, all those people could have seen God's miracle. They could have seen God acting, okay? But because of the lack of faith, they had no faith in Jesus Christ. So Jesus separated all only those who had some faith. Amen? He went up to the room. And this is wonderful, wonderful. But I, I truly believe this is exactly what happened. Amen? I really believe he keeps, saw the girl, Tabitha Kumi. Come on, get up. <laughs> and she got up. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. She got up. Oh, his word. Because his word is life. His life. She got up. She was here completely. Imagine the face of Jairus. Huh? <laughs> As a father. Huh? Wow. Look at this. She is alive. In his, in her mother. And the disciples. They never expected just Christ to be that powerful. First time. Okay? Of course, he raised ladders later, but anyway, two resurrection, re resurrections, okay, that they saw before their eyes. Amen? Amen? And this is our God. He is life, He is the way, the truth, and the life. And that is why I tell you guys. Don't ever lose faith. Okay? And Hebrews, I'm going to finish with Hebrews 11, but before that, uh, remember that uh, our faith has to be strong, but also has to be discreet. What does discreet mean? Discreet means modest, simple, humble. Okay, when, when, when you talk about our faith in Christ to other people, we don't show that we are the better than anybody else. Okay, we don't show other people that the, those who don't believe in God are nothing or you are, well, we are special. No, only God is special. Only the Lord is special, amen? We have to show other people our faith humbly. We have to be humble as Jesus was. Okay? Jesus Christ when he separated people he could have made the miracle for everybody to see. He could have made the miracle right there. Oh, I want to show everybody that I'm the son of God. No, I want to manifest my power. Everybody can see it. Applaud me. He didn't do it. Because he was a humble and he is a humble God. Our God is humble. That means we are supposed to be humble. Amen? Humble. Always humble. 
Remember, we have to have a victorious faith. When you pray, and you pray, be sure that you are more than a conqueror. Be sure that you be victorious. Be sure that when you pray, God will help you. Amen. How can you pray without even having the faith that God is going to help you? What should you, you don't pray like that? Oh, Amen. He might help me. He might not help. I don't know, but I'm going to pray anyway. No. The Bible says not to to to, to doubt. No doubt. Be be straightforward. Amen. There's something happened to you, something that needs to be done. Pray by faith and say, God, help me, help me, and help me indeed. Amen? Amen. And, and stick to your faith. Okay? And uh, in Hebrews, let's go to Hebrews and finish with this text here. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 1, page 851, page 851, okay, it says, now faith, faith, what is faith? Now faith is being sure of what we hope for, uncertain of what we do not see, okay, that is faith. What is faith? Faith is being sure of what we hope for uncertain of what we do not see. Amen? And then the whole chapter of 11 of Hebrews gave us testimony of all people of faith. Okay? By faith, he talked about Abel, he talked about Enoch, about Noah, about Abraham, and goes all the way down the story. Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, all those people trust the Lord, amen, and God gave them victory, amen. And it says here, chapter 12, Hebrews 12, chapter 12, page 852, verse 1. Therefore, since, listen to this, I'm going to finish with this verse. Hebrews 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, what are the witnesses? Everybody around us. Friends, neighbors, relatives, cousins, whatever. Let us throw off everything. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith who for the joy set before him endured the cross, the scorned shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen? Amen. That's what God tells us to do. Amen? Amen? So let's have faith, folks. Pray for the church. Pray for the ministry. Pray for each one of us. Pray for each other, okay? And pray mainly <coughs> for our family. Pray for family, for our kids. <coughs> the real kids. Pray for them. For uh, I never stop praying for my kids and my cousins and my uncles. And I pray every, almost every day. I don't say every, but almost every day. Pray for those who are lost. And let's pray for this month of May to be a super, an extraordinary month for God's glory in this place. Amen. Amen. Because we're gonna go out in Jesus' name and share. This wonderful gospel of salvation. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for...